Alright guys, so as I might have mentioned before in the video that uh, this Mac that we're working on actually has a shorted T2. Um, so this is going to be a no fix. That's a, a part that's not replaceable on this unit um, or any unit. You can't replace the T2 as of yet anyway. So this is going back as a no fix and in order to make the video what I had to do was take off all of the new CD3215s and put the old ones back on. And in this video we are not actually going to go through the repair and put the new CD3215s on. So I figured I would show you guys how I reball the CD3215s to put them on the board. Now one thing or a few things that I want to mention is that you'll see here um, that I have just a uh, piece paper towel and the reason I have that is because I'm using a super cheap stencil okay that bends very very easily okay um, so the paper towel kind of helps absorb the heat all right and that will make the stencil not bend okay normally you don't have to do this with the Quan Lee or any nicer stencil um, but uh, with the cheap ones that you know especially with the larger chips and how we're going to be doing it the stencil can bend up quite easily so uh, I like to use that paper towel now the next thing I wanted to bring up about the stencil is that it is going to be the BGA grid that is going to be the same but the chip on the stencil is going to be much bigger so you're going to see that it's it's going to fit all of the balls but there's going to be a lot more holes where they don't need to be and you're going to see how I deal with that all right so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to switch you over to the scope camera I know that chip kind of looks wet, but it's actually not. I'll put some flux there. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to wick the balls off of the chip. I like to do that because, on MacBook chips anyway, a lot of them, because then you get a nice, easy um, reball in action when you're doing that. So we'll go ahead and wick this, and maybe. Now you'll see here that that's, they're still not wicked properly, but you'll also see that there's one or two pads, one right here, one right here, that are not really going to accept solder that well. So what we can do, we have a couple of options. We can either use our, our smaller iron, and we'll drop the iron everywhere. We're going to use our smaller iron, put a little bit of solder on it and we're just going to try to touch those balls individually to bring them back to life. You see how that worked? And the rest of them look okay. And now we're going to get another piece of wick. Wick all the balls one more time. And that looks pretty good. All right. So now the next thing here is to clean the chip off. We're going to use some ISO. Zoom out a little bit for you guys so you can see better. And what I'm looking for is to make sure every pad looks just about flat and they are shiny. Okay, if they're kind of gray, that means the new solder will not stick to it properly. Okay, so when you go to reball, all the all the pads will be reballed except for that one, and then you have to start over. All right. So now the chip is ready, all right? And we're going to go ahead and take our stencil. Well, let me get rid of these old wicks here. Toss those. Okay. We're going to put our stencil on here, and you see how all of the oops, over one. There we go. All of the pads are lined up perfectly, but there's no pads in the center there, and there's no pads on the outside here. That's going to be okay. You'll see how we handle that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a glove on, because I'm going to be touching that leaded paste. That's no good. Now I'm going to be using 183 solder paste. All right, uh, the mechanic, I really like this stuff. And the airflow and temperature, I'm gonna have a real flow, real low airflow on my heat gun, okay? And then on the temperature, I'm gonna use whatever I know my unit will get, melt uh, 183 is, okay? So that it's gonna be different for my unit than it is yours. 
So I'm not gonna tell you the temperature, I'm just gonna tell you it's gonna be a little bit higher than I know what I need to melt this paste, okay? And we're gonna try to make sure this is lined up good. And there we go. We got a little bit too much paste there, but you see I'm using my other fingers to kind of dry it off or wipe away the access. So I'm gonna get some tweezers that I don't necessarily care about and stick them on there. Now, if you look at my hand, I guess you can't see, but what I'm gonna do is instead of resting my hand flat down like this, um, well, let me just switch the camera here so you guys can see it. Instead of having my hand, you know, sit down like this, I'm gonna have it lift up like this, okay? And what I, the reason I do that is because I notice when I have it down like this and I'm heating up uh, using my hot air gun, I tend to burn my fingers and it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. So um, that's why I'm gonna lift up my hand and that's not the view we want, there we go. Okay, so again, um, make sure the heat gun is on the right setting, lift up my hand and we are going to go ahead and start. I, you see the stencil moving. I think the chip moved with it, so we should be good. And you see I'm heating up the entire area. Normally the balls without the chip under it will start to melt first. You see how they go? And that means we are close to getting the chip or the solder on the chip to melt, all right? And there we go. You see how they're all coming in? All right, now we're gonna back away with the heat and we're gonna kind of wait for those balls to dry up a little bit before we remove the pressure. All right. And we're just gonna poke her out. Poke, poke, poke. And bam, the chip is out. All right. So now what we're looking for make sure everything is good all the balls are soldered yep yeah. and we're going to take all the access here off these two tweezers that always help just take that stuff off Oof. all right now we're going to look for the center of the chip to make sure there's no balls where there shouldn't be no it looks like everything's good so now what we're going to do is we're not going to flip her over like that we still want her this way is we're going to reflow it without the stencil or reheat it. Put a little bit more flux on there. And we're going to do the same thing. pretty good all right put that off to the side and three more to go all right back to the lesson. actually before back to the lesson I did want to go over one more thing because as you saw on the stencil itself you have all of the extra balls it looks nasty and you say oh that's gonna be a pain to clean up actually it's not that bad what I do just to show you here real quick is I throw a little bit of flux on it and just get my iron and let my iron do all the work. You see how it just sucks those balls right up. You don't even have to worry about it. And do the other side too, just in case. Good. And then what I do is I just get a Q-tip, put some ISO on her, and then clean her up. And there you go. You see, looking good as new. Ready for the next time. And that took what? Not even. 30 seconds, so there you go.